Nathan. Hey, Brendan. What's going on? Hello. Uh, h- hello. Hello. How you doing? Doing. Okay. Why are you talking like that? Why am I talking like we're? Well, like that. You're with the the errs. What's going on? Uh, Irma Gerd, I have no idea. You're no, you're 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 affecting that. I'm what what what's going on? Did you, are you? Oh, you're working on your Ted Levine impression, aren't you? Uh, no. Uh, you're then you're it's you're work. Oh, I know it's you're working on your uh Seth Green Chris Griffin impression. I'm not even a firm Liger fern. You're not even. A fur liger fur? What? What are you talking about? Look, look, let's... Okay. Have, have you watched the movie yet? Yours? The movie that Mariah picked out for us. You've watched it? Yours, Mariah! With the bird Kirk! You want a Merg with a big Coke? No, no, no. What's wrong with her? Uh, n- nothing. What's what is r- what? Oh, I know. We watched Medea's family reunion, so you're talking like Medea. I get it now. No, no, no. It's the Ermagard Burks girl. I love that mom. Okay. Happy Blur History Month! You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to press her now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Hello. No, no, no. <laughs> I will never. I'm going to do it for the whole episode. Insufferable. Tyler Perry presents What Were They Thinking? <laughs> Starring Burner and Nerithern. <laughs> It'll be three movies. Whoa, who's that? Did Milos let somebody into the studio? Milos. Is, I think she nice, and I now know that she's not Carla Gugino. She did do an impression to fool you, Milos. I'm surprised is, you, uh... Is water under bridge or, you know, through potatoes or whatever they say back in the homeland? Well, now that Milos has ruined the surprise, yes, we do have a guest. In the studio, it's Mariah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for every... Sorry, Nathan and Brendan for watching this movie. <laughs> hey, you know what? I do not have to apologize to me. <laughs> uh, I do not accept the apology. I watched this when I was like younger, and uh, it's impossible was, uh... for you to have watched it when you were older. <laughs> yeah, true. It's true. Very, very true. I watched this when I was fifty-eight, and <laughs> it was a long time ago, though. Yeah. This isn't gonna age. This episode is not gonna age well when we're over fifty eight. Well, this is like the only. This is like the second Medea movie, isn't it? Or the second movie with Medea in it? Yeah, it's the second one. It's the sequel to Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Yes. By the way, Happy Black History Month, everyone. <laughs> That's happy not why this was picked, but no, but it is funny that it ended up that way. Happy coincidence. So it was either this or white chicks. So what was I the, think this that one? <laughs> I think we landed on the. We landed on the right side of history in the, with this one. Well, yeah. let's talk about that, because I, I'm Brendan. I'm Nathan. I'm Mariah. And we're talking about... And this is everything I learned from movies! <laughs> no, this is not. It's what were they thinking. And we're talking about our first... Uh, the first Tyler Perry movie we've uh, ever done on this show. Yeah, you're welcome. You're hey. welcome, listeners. In all honesty, <laughs> I'm really surprised that I hadn't uh, foisted one on to you at this, by this point. Uh, yeah, same, but same, because I would have rather watched Demons from Ludlow. <laughs> Demons of 
Ludlow. No, Demons from Ludlow. We haven't done that one yet. That's the sequel. <laughs> That's a campus on UMV, too. <laughs> Demons in Ludlow? No, there's a Ludlow Hall. Okay. Okay. C- cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything you know about movies. What? I don't know. <laughs> Leave it in. <laughs> okay, anyway. I'm funny. So, g- glad you... Glad- yeah, leave it in. Future Brendan's already had enough problems to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about this. We're talking about Medea's Family Reunion, the second Medea movie in the franchise that has probably, I don't know, 82 movies conservatively. It's a sequel, so you know it's bad. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's just get into this shit. So, actually, before we get started, I want, I want to see if you guys can guess how much this movie cost. Five million dollars. Two and a half. Uh, six million. Okay. Wow. Do you know how much this movie made at the box office? Seventy-five all million. All of it. Seventy-five million, and your guess is all of it. All the money. It made all the money. It made sixty-three point three million dollars. That's bananas. Yeah. So basically, what this is it, Tyler Perry caters to a very specific audience. Uh, basically, African American and Christian audiences. Because yes. his movies are ripe with religion, and with you an might, right. well, you know, I, I think they're ripe <laughs> like a peach. Overtones. Yeah. Over the top tones, you might say. It gets a little preachy. A little bit. I mean, they, Southern Baptists, right? Yeah. Well, let's, let's get into this, because it opens with rose petals. And I, I was like, in, man, yeah. American beauty, yes! I wrote down, this is the weirdest Bond opening ever. <laughs> Bond? I don't know why I put that. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I got a weird laugh. <laughs> okay. And... Um, we start with a kind of a weird... So we meet Lisa right off the bat. And she's getting a, a nice bubble bath prepared for her by her husband. Yeah. With, In front of some random orchestra. Yeah! yeah we'll with, that. Well, yeah, I mean, is that how you... Is, that's how I take my bubble bath. In front I get three people, people that I don't know... Pay them some money to play some instruments while I sit in, in bath water naked. Yeah, so she she's got a nice bath. He, he sits her in the bath. He says, "I made this for I'm going out. You, I want you to have a nice, relaxing day." And for a second, I thought to myself, "Okay, obviously, like I started out saying, obviously this is like some sort of dream sequence." I didn't think it was, but they don't really make it that. Like, there's no like thing where she's kind of daydreaming or she wakes up. It just kind of cuts to the next scene awkwardly. <laughs> Well, I thought it was, like, a dream secret. Like, I thought it was real, because I wrote down, like, there's no way she slept through him putting all the rose petals everywhere. And then you're like, oh, it's a dream sequence. And I was like, okay. <laughs> was it? That's what I mean! I don't think it was. That That's, okay, if it's not a dream sequence, though, that is insane. He is kind of insane, though. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, we def- definitely, we'll get into that. I want but, I somebody mean... to watch me take a bath. Uh, that's, uh, that's for a different podcast. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> that's for my fetish cast. That's coming uh, this Wednesday. Check it out. Tubcast. And, I, and I'm sure Blair Underwood liked the work. I just don't feel that this was, this role would be something I'd, you know, put on the old demo reel. Mm, yeah. It's like, yeah, I played the wife-beating child hater in Medea's Family Reunion. Yeah, he's... Yeah. And it's like, it's not even like he's playing this role... I, I, want, I mean, I kind of want to say, like, he's not, it's not a realistic, I mean, it thing, it's a thing that happens, no doubt. Like, people, obviously, there are domestic abuse, there's domestic abuse all the time mm-hmm. in real life. Mm-hmm. But I feel like his part is so over the top yeah. that it's, like, to the point of almost, like, it, like cartoonishly over the top domestic abuse. Do you know what I mean? What I'm I trying to say? I what you're saying, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it's, it's... It's so... It, okay, what I'm trying to say is Tyler Perry, despite being rich, apparently hates rich people. Because <laughs> everybody that's, like, super rich in this movie is horrible. It's not necessarily the uh, people who are, are rich. I think it's more that he... It's people who are covetous. Like, he doesn't like investment bankers and whatever the mom does. Well, he's a lawyer in the movie. So I don't like again. I don't think it's necessarily the rich aspect. It's the fact that 
being rich is the be all and end all for them. Yeah. So it's not being rich, being being successful, it's being so covetous of your riches that all you can think about is your appearance and how thing how people other people perceive you. So it's it's a it's a pride and a um prejudice. <laughs> it's a prejudice towards prideful people, I guess. I, I just wanted to say it. I know you did. There were no zombies either. Damn it. Mm. Oh, that would be this would be so much better. <laughs> It wouldn't, you know what? I wouldn't have been that surprised by it because literally this movie goes from tone to tone with like the effect. There's three movies in one. Yeah. Yes. It, it, there's yep. no like, there's no subtlety in this movie. I actually, I, I, I think when I we were when I was watching it, I had messaged Brandon. And I said, I think this was cobbled together from three scripts that he was working on. But I think that's all his movies. It's like a Simpsons episode. Yeah, like, like I when think it keeps, that's like a, jumping, <laughs> like a treehouse of horror. No, no, like a like you know, whenever you watch The Simpsons, there's always like a B story. Yeah. Or or now nowadays when they open with like 15 minutes and then the last 10 minutes are a completely different plot. Mm. So in theory, this is a comedy. Well, it's a dramedy. It, it's I mean yes, but it's again it goes from dr- drama to comedy with the subtlety of a sledgehammer. True. Now, we start off with, so Lisa, like I said, Lisa at the beginning with the what may not may not be a dream sequence, which, again, is insane. But she's hanging out with her sister Vanessa and their other friend who I don't believe I got her name. I'm assuming she's just, a, just like, a friend. But they're hanging out uh, at the poolside because Lisa's going to get married to Carlos... Uh, they get, they get her, uh, they're, sorry, they're at poolside, and they get a visit from a bus driver, who apparently is dropping off a painting. Yes, because he's also an artist. Right. But I just love how he's like, oh, right. how they're like, who's that? It's like, I'm Frankie, you, you drive my bus. What are you doing here? I was just dropping off a painting. What? <laughs> he's like creepy, he's like, he know he knows like her stop. Yeah, like, he's like, you always up. drive my bus, you always get off at this stop. I'm here to hit on you in front of your friends. Clearly, you've never been infatuated. Uh, Frankie's creepy. I don't care. That's <laughs> what, I'm, st- I'm standing by that. I did like his hair. He got a nice, low-profile fro going on. You know, don't, don't see that too often these days. Like the uh, like a haircut that was made, like you can make in San Andreas. <laughs> yes. Grand Theft Auto. Yes, very much so. <laughs> well, we do need to talk about his uh, his preference in uh nightclub venues though we'll get to that later we can get to that later yes that that was odd (laughs) so yeah he's hitting on uh vanessa and vanessa has two kids he has one kid this movie does a a really this movie's exposition is insane i find like they're just like i have two kids and i love god i have one kid and i love god like it's just very you know let's fuck (laughs) basically well no they can't fuck they owe themselves to god they're celibate for Jesus. But anyway, so they... they Vanessa, like, kind of blows them off. It's like, yeah, yeah, maybe, whatever. See you on the bus. Well, no, she's kind of non-committal. And yeah. Lisa's like, She's going to call you. Don't even worry number. about it. She will call you. And they're all, like... They go back to the play... They go back to Lisa's they place. And a stripper, stripper comes over. <laughs> <laughs> His hair did look yes. like the Predator. Yes. Uh. What? <laughs> what? Mariah's really into the Predator. Uh, well, I who can blame her? Okay. So Predator <laughs> Stripper. What they say? So the Predator Stripper comes over and starts dancing. It did not go as planned. No, because... Mr. Carlos sh- shows up. Scherzerp. Curler Scherzerp. Scherzerp. God damn it. And Carlos is Earl. Hurler. Hurler. Smack. <sighs> so Carlos gets home early and uh, he, he's like, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. At least it's like, this is clearly not fine. Everyone get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> And then as soon as she turns around, we see that he is an abusive husband. Yeah, so we see that he's an abusive husband, and he's, uh, you know, basically like, don't make a fool out of me, etc., etc. But then comes the, one of the more troubling parts, because Lisa then goes to tell her mother, uh, Victoria. She looks yes. so young. She does look very young, yeah. And she's kind of stupid, too. Okay. Well, she's vain. I would say she's stupid. She's just... I think she very much knows what she's doing. She's vain and covetous, which is another reason why she's 
one of the bad guys in well, this movie. Well, and, like, movie. much worse than that, as we'll find we out We find later. out, yes. Yeah. But, right, but as for right now, she tells her mother, you know, my husband is beating me. What's her advice? Her advice is, uh, well, you probably shouldn't do things that make him so angry. And you know what? Just take the beating, because sometimes you gotta put up with stuff in life. So, meanwhile, meanwhile, on the other side of town, we're in court. And I gotta ask, that the judge who presides over, is, is she one of the judges from, like, Hot Bench or one of those daytime TV judge shows? Because she looked awfully familiar. I don't know, but I would have really liked if it was literally Judge Judy or Joe Brown. One of the TV judges, yeah. Yeah. Just, like, but, like, playing themselves as, like, a legitimate, just, like, <laughs> judge. <laughs> and no attention was paid to it. Like, it was just it was just there. Um, but at this trial... Now, Nathan, this is where I want to ask you a question. Because we've got this kid named Nikki. Mm-hmm. And she's on trial... Uh, well, she's there because she stole something. She's about, right. what, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. And uh, and she says, okay, take a seat. We're going to wait for someone from child services to pick you up. Yep. So she sits down, and then Medea enters the room. Hello! With her lawyer, also Tyler Perry. They are the side power. by side. Oh my god, the power of movies. The power, <laughs> the magic of cinema. That's, that's what I put on as a note. <laughs> so, wow. Much like Huey Lewis, the power of movies. Did it win the Oscar for Best Visual Effects? It did not. Should. It, it, Damn. It, it, it did not. Um, but here's the thing. So apparently Medea has gotten in trouble for taking off her ankle bracelet because she's under house arrest from the previous movie, which I did not see and I will not see. But, uh... It was good. Yeah. She talked about it. It was fun. Yeah, sure. Um, you can't, so... Okay, you can't have any fun at all. Yeah. Anyway. So she's in trouble for taking off her ankle bracelet and... But they start talking about, oh, Medea's looking after my kids. Medea's looking after my brother. And the judge is like, you know what? You're this kid's new foster mom. This is not legal at all. No. <laughs> Don't it's... think that could happen. I actually have a note. I think we're in an American Ninja type situation here. <laughs> well, even um, Mikey. Yes. When we talked about Mikey and how that the, they were just like, here's your new kid. That you meet for the first time and pick up at the airport. Yep. With no one supervising. Right. <laughs> no, that, that's that's legally by That's legal, right? Totally. Yeah, that's exactly how it worked for me. I just went in and I was like, uh, yeah, can I get a couple of kids to go, please? That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, 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 and a medium Coke. And a medium Coke, yes. (laughs) Uh, so we get, uh, the next thing is we get Lisa going to her dress fitting, because again, she's gonna get married to the evil, uh, Carlos. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we learn that the mother really doesn't care for Vanessa. Or her own grandkids, who she calls bastards. Mean. Right in front of her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and she's not even talking to the mother of the kids, but she says it loudly in front of her. Yes. And then we get the best car fight uh, ever until they made the raid (laughs) 2. Like, this is, like, now the second best car fight in the history of film, but in until they made the raid two, this was the best car fight in the history of film. But here's what I want to say here, though, because mm. if they're if they're gonna have this movie where Medea is just like you know slapping around the kids or whatever for like laughs, like whatever, fine, that's that's fine, you know, I get it. Um, yeah. but this came about five minutes after a harrowing scene where a wife was getting like slapped across the face by her abusive husband. It's a bit of a weird tone jump. It is a bit of a weird tone jump. However, there are differences in the situation. Uh, with uh, Lisa, um, she didn't do really much of anything. It wasn't her fault. None of the stuff was her fault. And she was actually doing her best to keep things peaceful and smooth, and she still caught a beating. Um, this little girl, on the other hand, won't stop popping her gum, won't listen, is a thief. And you know what? She's like little Sam Denise that I don't know what she's going to do. Because that's a line from the movie. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just weird that they use the same kind of action, though, but played for two completely different, like, tones. I don't know. But with Medea doing it, it has to be funny. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I still thought it was kind of weird. 
And you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, in all honesty, it's uh, a, a, a smack to say, knock it off. Okay, you're being disrespectful and rude. Stop it. She gets in the back. She of was the legitimately car. doing something to needle the folks in the scene, whereas Lisa was doing nothing at all. Uh huh. I'm not talking about that part. I'm just talking about the hitting of the child and the woman. Sometimes a kid needs a good beating. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not even. I'm just saying them together, so close together, is weird. <laughs> I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, Brand's triggered. I don't know. No, I'm just, I'm just, it just, it just struck me as weird. Um, anyway. It struck so, her as weird, too. <laughs> like, right across the face. <laughs> I hope you're talking about the child. Hit her so hard, she could, she dialed 919. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See? It's funny. No. Raya laughed. Nope. Yep. I did. So, anyway... Uh, Medea and Nikki and uh, Brian, basically two Tyler Perrys and a child, uh, yep. arrive at the house where elderly Uncle Joe is there, and so that makes three Tyler Perrys and a child. Yeah, three fucking Tyler Perrys in one scene. Wow. See, the, a cinematic genius. Yeah, except it. Oh wait, you mean because Eddie Murphy's already done this years before? Yeah, but you know, here's the thing. I like Tyler Perry more than I like Eddie Murphy. What? Oh my gosh. What? Wow. What? What? I don't know. Tyler Perry seems like the kind of guy I could sit down and have a conversation with. Eddie Murphy seems like he'd be, uh, you know, uh, a little full of himself. Oh, I don't care about that. The Nutty Professor is like Shawshank Terrible. Redemption compared to no, this. No, no, no. I'd rather watch... Tell you what. I'd rather watch a Medea movie with him as, as Uncle Joe, uh, Brian... And Medea, the entire time, then watch The Clumps. I didn't say The Clumps. I said The Nutty or Professor. Or Nutty Professor. Okay, this podcast is over. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> what That's are you fun. talking about? I am talking about... That's Eddie Murphy right now. Right now for backup. No, yes, that's... You're right. No, you're right. It was a terrible movie. No, I agree. I would rather... Yeah, you're right, Mr. Murphy. Medea is a far superior and a better handled... Hang up that fucking phone! Makeup. No, Brendan's telling me to hang up, Mr. Murphy, but I know you know, and you know that I know, that Tyler Perry is is doing what you did in Coming to America, but way better. What? What? Way, way better. Coming right? to America? Yes. Are you on right. crack? So and this right, is the Mr. last Murphy. episode of What so, Were They Thinking? Good so night. right. Yo, you're right. Y yes, I think Tyler Perry should make more movies where he plays more multiple roles. Oh! It's, been a to you. it's been a delight talking to you, Mr. Murphy, but I gotta get back to the podcast. Okay. Yes. Beverly Hills Cop 5. Can't wait. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, did I miss anything? You're on crack. And no, 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 I was on the phone. Coming to America? What about it? Is <laughs> worse than this movie? I didn't say that. That's what I heard. No, no. No, I, I had said what he was trying to accomplish with the wearing of multiple, you know, playing multiple characters, you know, was it was it was good. It was inspirational. You know, it's like a proto situation where you know, somebody does it, which sparks the idea and puts it out into the collective unconscious. But somebody else comes along and goes, you know what? I think I could put a finer polish on this. And that's exactly what Tyler Perry did. You are the most fucking wrong you've ever been. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> I picked this movie. <laughs> oh, good. Good gravy. Brenda, go get your puffer. Calm down. Anyway. So... Back, back to this cinematic masterpiece. No, don't ever say that again. <laughs> what? I said, back to no, this cinematic no, masterpiece. No, cutting it out. <sighs> Let's just go to the bus. Oh, that scene. <laughs> You're gonna go jump... Seems a bit of a reaction. What? It's a bit of an overreaction. You're gonna jump in front of a bus? That's a scene on the bus, you... Oh! So, Vanessa is on the bus, of course, and Frankie is there. Now, here's... <laughs> Frankie is, like, hitting on her, but the thing is that the bus is, like, packed with people. <laughs> and, and he's just, yelling. He's just yelling in the back, like, Hey, you never called me. Hey, you should call me. Hey, I have kids, too. To the point where the people on the bus literally are like, Oh my god, can you fucking just acknowledge him? Like, yeah. And I got I got questions. 
Yeah. Um, one, why is it... Why is he looked at by most people, or at least the way it's played off of in this movie, as lesser than for being a bus driver? That is a union gig mm -hmm. with great medical and dental benefits. Well, I mean, by the mother, because he's not part of, like, the upper class or whatever. Right. And no one's ever sat back to say to her, you know what, uh, that guy, he's in a union, he's got medical and dental benefits, also, he's got a pretty secure job because it's a municipal government job and transportation systems, once instituted into a city, usually don't leave. <laughs> okay. So he's going to be employed until he decides to no longer be employed uh, for the city transit. Nathan, are you also a bus driver? No. Okay. But I, always, I, I find it ridiculously frustrating when people who are like, bus drivers or janitors or uh, garbage collectors get looked down on as like they're less than or like their job's not important or that they're, you know, lower class. Man, they got the system beat. They've got a government job, again, union, benefits, all that stuff, uh, and their jobs aren't going anywhere. They're not, you can't outsource bus driving to another country. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> well, Mr. Trump, you try it. The bus driving is going to be huge. I'm going to have a big bus wall. <laughs> separate all the different kinds of buses. All right. So now that I'm done my classist rant. <laughs> the thing on the bus, though, is like that, that dr kind of drives me nuts. Is all these people like are just... If, like, if we had just had the scene, if Vanessa got on the bus and it was just, like, an empty bus, or there was, like, one person and they didn't really talk, we it would change nothing in the scene. Because, like, these people are like, hey, she's got two kids, that's not good. And then he says, I have one kid, too. And then another bu bus passenger says, ma'am, he has a kid, he's a good man. Like, I think we get the point without the people chiming in. <laughs> I, I did enjoy the, the, the fact that one of the girls was named... Uh, Tyrequa? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just weird that, like, Tyler Perry's like, hmm, the audience is not gonna know unless I have people actually telling them what's going on. I don't have someone to vouch for. Come on, jeepers. I don't understand why this scene needed to happen. Like, exactly. we know he's well, a bus no, driver. Yes, it does. Okay, and here's why. One, it gives him an opportunity to, to hit on her again. Uh, two, it gives all an opportunity for uh, people to vouch for him i still think that's and three, unnecessary it also shows with his character that he's very also community minded because the people in his community or the people on his route are folks who know him uh and know he's a good guy they could have just had i don't think we need that though like we know he's a good guy because he comes in and he's all like i'm a christian and i've got a son and it's like yeah okay tyler perry we get it <laughs> but a lot of this a lot of the scripts and stuff that uh, Tyler Perry works from are often jump offs from plays and stuff that he's that he's written and done as well. Right. So I think that's why you have the exposition so much, why it's so heavy in his his writing. I mean, does he know that you're allowed to rewrite though? <laughs> he does, okay. but I mean, think about it. When you have to write, produce direct and play three roles who's got time to rewrite brandon yeah when you're being a cinematic okay genius, you need to stop right now you you need no. you need to take as much time and prioritize you know Holy prioritize shit. that performance to make sure it's just so i mean you're directing and you, i mean you don't have time to rewrite genius can only do so much he's you know, he's still but a mere man. God damn it. That's all I can say right now. Did you happen to notice that the bus route number changed? I did um, not. When he was driving, when they when he picked her up, it was the 99G. And then later on in the montage, as he's hitting on her and everyone's saying, yeah, he's a great guy, it changed to the 49L. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a magical bus. I don't know. <laughs> It's there a goof. Go. Yeah. Maybe it was in the play and he forgot to include that exposition. Uh, yeah. Do we get a little bit of Medea and Nikki? 
because Nikki's saying that the kids are mean to her at school. Oh, so so yes. Medea gets on the bus and starts slapping some kid around. And this bus driver lets child abuse happen. Yeah, he just... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not a very responsible I, thing to so do. What, this movie came in, what, 10, 15 years ago? I think so. Oh, what, child abuse was legal then? <laughs> in the South. <laughs> but, I mean, the bus driver doesn't even say word one. He's just I like... I don't even think there's yeah. a bus driver. <laughs> Wait, what? You, is it another magical bus? Well, I don't know. There's like you don't see a bus, so you don't see a driver. No, there's a driver. She she's standing next to him when she starts mouthing off to all the oh, kids. Oh right. Medea's the driver. She drives them to school. And you know what? Here, I, that kid needed a beating. He deserved it. I would be the worst. I'd be the worst cop judge because I'd be like, all right. So what did the victim do? But I think if you're a bus driver, you're not just gonna sit there and let one of the kids get slapped around. I don't know. It depends on what you think of the kid. I will get a bus driver on this show, Nathan. We'll ask okay. him. <laughs> I, I know like three, so I could probably get uh, get one on too. I mean, if we're talking about school bus drivers, I could even do an interview with my dad because he actually drove bus for about a year or two before he got on as a full mechanic at the school bus garage uh, here. And I'm sure he could be like, yeah, there are a couple of kids who deserve to catch a beating you know, from an adult. I wouldn't have said shit. <laughs> yeah i think maybe if somebody caught wind of that though they might get in trouble i don't get crap you know what he's long retired i'm not talking about your dad i'm talking about the guy in the movie <laughs> mm. um oh i want to say also about the scene on the bus that like shit that like stupid like poem he reads her like roses are red blah 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 she reacts to it as if it's like the funniest thing she's ever heard <laughs> It's because he's being corny and sweet. It's so stupid. Anyway. Wow, you're so, you're so joyless and cold. Oh, this movie's horrible. So anyway, when Medea puts Nikki on the bus, why did she quote the color purple? Oh my god, wasn't that the best? <laughs> I've been cold dead in the ground before I let Harpo beat me. She said, I love Harpo. All my life I had to fight. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway. Whatever. So, um, Vanessa and Frankie finally have their uh, so-called date, kind of. Ugh, at that yeah. weird club. No, 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 not yet. No, no, they go to they the, take they their go kids to the park. To the park. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And uh, they stand quite a bit away from where the kids are playing <laughs> to talk about, you know, God and poetry and stuff. Yep. And uh, I thought this was a backdrop. But the water was moving. The water was moving, but I, I don't know. It, it may The buildings may have been fake. Uh, this is another scene where Nikki gets uh, beaten up by Medea. Because she's lying. She needs a whooping. Yeah. Um, she didn't. And like, Medea, there's no specific uh, hour for the curfew, but she has to be home uh, before the streetlights come on. <laughs> Which is like, man, I hope you wrote down the time that usually happens. <laughs> well, no, that's... A, that, that's legitimately a thing mm. oh i know but like you better know exactly what time that is because, <laughs> because she doesn't give a time like you said well you're supposed to be able to take the cue from like you know the light outside because the idea of her being out doing stuff means she's outside doing stuff not you know in a in a basement where she can't see natural light yeah, but I mean, still, like, it, you have to be home by that time, so, like, mm -hmm. you have to know exactly the time when that happens, to be home by that time. I, I think that there's probably a situation where there's a street light out in front of Medea's place, and she can see all the lights on, and she's not home, she's gonna get a whooping. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the kid's point of view. Right. She better, she better have that stopwatch ready. I don't, again, there's no specific time. But I mean, it's gotta be the. It's usually the They're same light time every activated night. Activated more often than not. Yeah, there, but I mean, light sensors on them to, to tell them when to come yeah. on when it gets a certain amount of darkness outside. But I mean, you know, basically when it starts to get dark out every night around right. around the time. That's all yes. I'm saying is like she would need to know like the time when it starts to get dark. That's all. Or have the ability to see the sky. Gotcha. Yeah. <sighs> I fucking hate this movie. I'm loving it more and more every second. All right, let's. So now we're we're talking about the uh, we're to, back to back to Lisa and Carlos. No, 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 no. Before we do that, we find out that uh, Nikki is uh, she she's got she's down on school, doesn't want to do it. 
because she's having some issues with algebra. You mean algebra? Which, no, Algero. Algero, yeah. That's what Smerdia keeps calling. You get it? Because it's the singer. <laughs> yep, that's the joke. Hilarious. And uh, so she gets Jennifer, uh, Brian's daughter, to help her. I don't... Do we see Jennifer? Nope. Completely okay. off screen. All right. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Well, then, then, then uh, we're back to Carlos and Lisa. Right. And they are at a club... And basically, it's just basically to uh, to show more of, like, how he has control over her. He gets embarrassed because she yawns. That is the weirdest yeah. thing. Yeah, that is the point it, where I was like, they're really, like, it is, they're really pushing this. You know what I mean? Well, you know what it reminded me of? What? The uh, uh, millions of stories uh, about uh, Vince McMahon getting pissed off when people sneeze. Yeah. He gets mad at himself that he can't hold a sneeze in. Because he hates not having control. Sneeze or right. yawn? No, sneeze. Oh. Like, he, Vince McMahon is such a control freak to the point where if he sneezes, he feels shitty because he couldn't control it. What? Yes. Stupid. That is the kind of man he is. Wow. Well, that is the kind of man Carlos is. And, and, well, let's just yawn. let's just hold on for a second. Because I am, I mean, I don't know if he does. I don't know if he doesn't. But I'm not saying that Vince McMahon necessarily beats his wife. Just saying that he no, likes control. No, but he, the, the control yeah, aspect exactly. is what I'm getting at. I just don't want controlling. I don't want Vince to get at us on Twitter. Right. <laughs> We're not saying Vince McMahon's a wife-beating child hater. No. We're just saying that he's a control freak who gets mad at himself when he sneezes. <laughs> which is also, which is kind of ridiculous anyway. Instantly a classic episode. This is going down in the annals of history as one of our best episodes. <laughs> Most contentious. I'm so glad that we chose to do this cinematic masterpiece. I was actually thinking about... The next time you say cinematic masterpiece, Nathan, I'm going to punch this microphone. Okay, I'll make it worth it then. My next pick is going to be Faithful Findings. I don't know that one. All right, anyway, so what are we at? Where are we at now? So, yeah, Yeah. anyway, he's he's basically uh, exerting more of his, like, power over her, saying, like, don't embarrass me. Et cetera, yeah, et and he tells her not to play the victim when she's like, just go ahead and hit me here, here in front of your friends. Yeah. So they can all see what kind of guy you are. And then he's like, always playing the victim. She's not playing. She is a victim. Also, mm-hmm. this is the craziest part of their scene. Well, one of the craziest parts. Because he says, the only way you're leaving me is in a body bag, basically. Because I'll love you to death. I'll love you to death if you know what I mean. Dot, dot, dot. I'm going to kill you. Right. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's um, Okay, so then then we get the other side, uh, the other sister, Vanessa. Oh my gosh. About yeah. to go out with Frankie, but first we get a, uh, Tyler Perry as Joe just farts for a while. And it is delightful. Sure. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it's great. And uh, Medea comes down to, uh, to greet them. Vanessa comes downstairs. And Nathan, we have to talk about the fucking poetry club. Oh my god. I call it the porno club. Nathan, you done farting? Yes. Okay. We need to talk I did about... like the fact that there was plastic on the furniture at Medea's place. Oh, I didn't notice the that. The only thing that didn't have plastic on it was Uncle Joe's chair. Oh yeah, because he's just farting on it. it's now just rife with fart fumes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, the poetry club. Weird. What the poetry club? Fuck was that? So okay, we start with so a guy in. doing like beat poetry. I get why. He, I get why he would pick to go to sure. a poetry club, just standard poetry club, because she has expressed an interest in poetry. Of course. But the poetry club is not a standard poetry club. No, you the uh, poet has two minutes to read their poem. While uh, an artist paints a picture <laughs> right. based on what the poem is saying to them, I was like, I was laughing so hard because see, I was like, it's funny. No, uh, not because of anything the movie did, in spite of it. Um, and I was like, where is this in the world? <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> like <laughs> the painting, the the shot where they because when they go to the poetry club, they start on the guy doing the beat poetry. Yep. The guy that's there. But then when they pull out, like, they go, like, to a wide shot, when I saw the guy painting behind him, I lo- I was like, what? This is straight up out of, like, a parody. 
Yes, it's definitely an odd thing. It's that's for sure. It's out of like like one of those like uh, I don't want to say epic movie because those are just people falling down, but like uh, like a hot shots or something. Like somebody's just painting behind for no reason. And then and so, a singer too. Yeah, well that's what I said. Like he's doing poetry. But there's a singer that sings. But there's a backup singer. Oh my god, I don't understand anything in this yeah. movie. Because when she starts reading her poem, which and he's painting. Yeah. And there's a girl who's just like, no, courage. Right. Yeah, they they know, despite her like being like, oh, oh, I'm going to go on stage. Okay. The people behind her just know exactly when to do, when, what to play, when to come in. Well, I didn't prepare. <laughs> What's I didn't that? prepare, but oh my goodness. It's improv. I mean, come on. What? It's a stretch. If it's a, if it's a, if they're a jazz uh, group, then they do that sort of stuff all the time. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of ridiculous that she didn't have anything prepared, but it all worked out perfectly. Oh, uh, her. Okay, not having anything prepared. All right, that's... Okay, maybe. Uh, or, or maybe it's a poem that she wrote that's one of her favorite poems. I thought you were talking about, you know, how the, uh, uh, the musicians and the singers and stuff were kind of coming in uh as she was doing it the i mean you got a you got a jazz group they're gonna know how to to go with the flow as it were it's just very polished for a last minute throw together <laughs> anyway so the poetry club is weird as fuck yes it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely odd but uh meanwhile in blade runner <laughs> what well we get a shot because we're going back to uh, Carlos and Lisa. Oh, the filter! This, like, the building and the filter. <laughs> like, the, the building's got this big blue light around the top of it, and the the camera filter makes everything look kind of hazy or washed out. And I'm like, is it like it? It looked like something out of like some futuristic movie setting, like Altered Carbon or light? Blade Runner. The oh. black light. The black light. The black light. It looks no. like a black. Oh, light. but that's inside when she's oh. sneaking off she's thinking about sneaking out and leaving why is she doing this now yeah he goes to work yeah she has all day she's all day to escape uh, yeah i don't know like i understand listen i'm not trying to say like you know abusive relationships people don't leave them i understand there's factors but if you are going to choose to leave yes why would the time of day you choose be when he is home well depending and he in might the middle be really of the night yeah he might be a deep sleeper like you, Brendan. Well, he clearly isn't because when she, because when she uh, gets her things, he's sitting up in bed. Yes. And he said, and he threatens to throw her off the balcony. Well, no. First, he does the the traditional "I'm sorry, I love you," and all that stuff that he, all the lines that he says every time he hits her. And when she's like, "That's great, but that's not good enough," then you get. They're true, his true colors. He's like, what do you mean my lines aren't working? So now I have to result to violence because that's all I know. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, the only way you're going out, you're getting out of here is out off the balcony window. Yeah. Because even after he said he was sorry, uh, you know, I have a note here. Wow, he's clearly super sorry. So sorry he's going to throw her over the balcony. Now that's how you say sorry in right. Atlanta. We get an awesome montage next. It's just, um, you know, Lisa being miserable and Vanessa growing her relationship with Frankie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And isn't it, like, kind of, like, upbeat music? And you see, like, uh, you see, like, um, Carlos kind of, like, almost, like, throwing her around? Yeah. With, like, this music that's like, yeah! <laughs> I don't think it's that upbeat, it's but... It's pretty upbeat for what the it scene is. It is upbeat. Because they're also, because they're showing, you know, Frankie and Vanessa's, their, their whole thing. Yeah. yeah. She's staying celibate, though. She does. Yeah. I did think it was kind of interesting that one of the shots that they used in the montage was clearly from the scene when uh, Lisa tried to sneak away from Carlos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they just repeated it. Yeah, they just, they took the part that they didn't use in that scene and stuck it in this montage well yeah because it's the that's the blade runner filter same lighting yeah and they're dressed wearing the same stuff everything yeah um so lisa does make it away make it out 
And she yes. tells Vanessa, she finally tells Vanessa that Carlos has been beating her. Mm -hmm. And Vanessa is about to tell Medea. Yes. But instead, you know, they go the whole route where it's like, oh, a friend of ours. And then what should we do? And Medea says, before or after the funeral? Yeah. And she says, well, the solution to your complicated issue is to just throw hot grits in his face. Uh, no, and then hit him with a frying pan. Yeah. Because you got to throw and swat. Throw <laughs> and swat. So stupid. I don't know. That's just, that's a solid plan. Or, or you know, Just get him arrested. <laughs> you know, Brendan, uh, are you ever going to, uh, you know, met out, you know, real street justice to anybody? I don't think so. It's throw Call and swat. the police. Oh, you're so white. Throw and swat. No, it's a stupid scene. I hate this movie so much, Nathan. I hate this fucking movie. This... Are you ready for this? Are you ready? I'm going to say I, it. I'm going to okay. say it. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is worse than Postal. Oh, You're my God. You're lying. Nope. Wow. Lying. I hate it worse than nope. Postal. How nope. about Ben and Arthur? Oh, yeah. Way worse. You, you are now wronger than you have ever been in your entire worse life. Worse than Postal. Oh, wrong. my gosh. So I think wrong. Ben and Arthur. This movie makes me angry. Uh, no, how about Human Centipede? This yes, way worse than Human Centipede. Oh my! God. I would watch this movie fifty times more than having to watch Postal one more time. I would watch Postal twice to not watch this one more time. I'll be the nope. judge of that. I'll watch Postal, then I'll watch. I remember this. You one. don't, Mariah. Don't do it to yourself. It's better than this. It's trust worse me. than this movie. Like I don't think this one is that bad. It's like, bad. Nope. I like not. Uncle Joe is pretty funny. In fact, it's, I would say it's a cinematic masterpiece. All right, let's move on to the next. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> it's all right, Brendan. Don't cry. What's the next scene, Nathan? Man, you know what? It would be great if they had, like, they got these in a box set, and they came with, like, like a little, like, a Medea bobblehead or, or a collectible mini belt. Yeah, you that'd know? be great if I was, like, in hell. So, anyway, what's the next scene, Nathan? <laughs> Well, if you didn't think Carlos and uh, Lisa's mom were terrible enough, we get uh, get a scene where we show that they're in cahoots um, so they could get Lisa's trust fund money. Yeah. And there's also some weird sexual tension between them. Oh, yes, definitely. I actually thought that it was going to happen in that scene. I was like, oh, are we really going down that route? <laughs> And then add that to the fourth movie. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised they talked about his penis that much. Oh my god, there's so much like, she's like, maybe you don't have anything downstairs or something like that. You're making up for, you know, a tiny ding dong. <laughs> you gotta be subtle about it. Yeah, that, that's pretty mm -hmm. much what they say. Um, and yeah, he basically calls her old and tells her to leave and says, you better have, you better have my wife back in my home by tonight. Right. Yeah. And she says, "Stop beating me, my, my stop beating my daughter." And he's basically like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> "I'll think about it." Yeah, maybe I'll mull it over. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking gross. So both of them are just gross fucking people. Oh, they're horrible. Yep. Um, again, like over the top horrible, like yeah. insanely horrible. But wait. So yeah, oh, just wait. So the. Uh, this is where the mother goes to try to pick up Lisa, oh, I believe, Lord. right? Oh my god, this part. Oh yeah, there's a weird there's a weird cut in this movie where yeah. like Frankie and Vanessa are like start to make out and then they cut to all of them in bed, like with the kids and everything. Well, yes, they're they're cuddling and well, uh, weird, trying though. to make a family together. Well, yeah, I know, but it's just a weird it's a weird cut to make right they're as all, they're starting to make I mean, out. The kids are all like what? 4 and 5. So they're like, they're still at that kind of sweet age where they they want to sleep with mom and dad sort of thing. But okay, it looks that's... like they had sex with the children. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It really does. It the editing does. is no, it doesn't. The editing is awful, awful. The pieces. editing is terrible because it goes from make out to in bed with the kids. That's a weird cut. I don't care. That's a weird. I can fucking understand cut. what you're saying, Nathan, but yeah, it is kind of. But weird we've when already I first saw established it. earlier that she is celibate and. Till she ever gets married again. Okay, then have them kiss. 
have them stop kissing, lay back in bed, then cut to them with the kids. I, I just figured because she was she had we had covered it earlier about her being celibate that any time that she was in bed that they were just sleeping. Also, it, it, this scene just says it's all in the family. <laughs> <laughs> So we cut to the next morning where Frankie couldn't just leave a goddamn note. No. No. Right? Yeah, yeah, you should have All of something. that, her losing her mind about her kids uh, being out with him and her not knowing where her kids were, could have been, you know, could have been ha- handled so easily. Like, took the kids for ice cream back in 15. How long did she sleep in if they went for ice cream? Holy moly. Well, they could have got up at like six in the morning. I don't know. But ice cream again, at six a.m. This is where we kind of start to see. Oh, there may have been something else going on with her upbringing. You know what, though, I was, <laughs> I was at this point, I was like, oh my god, is one of the twists going to be that he's actually a horrible person? And he's kidnapped her children because that <laughs> would be insane. <laughs> I'd be okay but with it. luckily, there and is totally something... out of place in a Tyler Perry. Movie. Oh yeah, that, that'd be the fifth movie. <laughs> Excuse no, it would be totally not out of place because Tyler Perry introduced some wild twists in his movies. Ooh, well, boy. I, maybe if he was still doing the Alex Cross movies. Uh, have you seen Temptation: Confessions of a Marriage Counselor? No, I rest is that my case. Media movie? No, that's a Tyler Perry movie. No, I haven't seen it. There was the girl Brenda from a scary movie. No. Uh-oh. Oh. No, I got, I got nothing. Uh, That's when the ba- vow breaks or whatever. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so, yeah, the, the, he finally comes back with the kids. They got ice cream, and she's, like, upset. And, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. What happens next? <laughs> well, we go we go back to uh, after he calms her down, and his hands move around to a million different places from cut to cut. Because <laughs> at one point, his hands are on her face trying to calm her down. And then and they cut to another angle, and his hand is on her shoulder. And then there's another cut later where her, his hand is up by, like, her temple trying to calm her down. <laughs> All over the place. Yes. After that, though, uh, we go to Medea's and find out that Nikki got a B on her Algero test. Woohoo! Yeah, so she must have known all the songs. Like, uh, I can't think of any. Oh, you got an F in Yaldero, didn't you? I knew one song, and I couldn't think of the name of it. She got a D. She got a D. Oh, I got it. Let's stay together. Together. There, there you go. go. Okay. I, that, what's that, like a C minus? <laughs> no. That's a D. Um, so, and I don't know, for some reason, uh, Uncle Joe says that he might be Nikki's father. Was your... What? <laughs> yeah. He just <laughs> says it really quick. What? He says it real quick. That. He's like, "Was your he's like, was your mother's name? I can't remember what oh. the name he said, but he mentions just some random woman by name, and she's like, I knew her. How old are you? I could be your dad. Yeah, that's weird. And I'm like, oh my god, please go down this road. I, unfortunately, that's not what happened. No, it's just a throwaway uh, line. This is a scene where this movie really goes into the darkness. Okay. Because Victoria, the mother, comes to get comes to pick up uh, Lisa to bring. I mean, let's face it, she comes to bring her home to her abusive husband, and again, she knows all about this. She doesn't care, mm-hmm. and we learn a terrifying secret about uh, the, the, their her daughter's childhood, especially Vanessa. Yes. Oh, God. So yep. I mean, I I don't know how else to put this, but she basically. Had her husband, her second husband, uh, knowingly allowed him to uh, molest Vanessa when she is a daughter. No, no, no. He straight out asked her. Unless she let him. Yeah. Like, that's fucked. (laughs) And then she was like, okay. I mean, I find it hard to doubt the genius of Tyler Perry, but this is definitely My a questionable. God, thing. Nathan. <laughs> anyway, but here's the thing: at this point in the movie, she should be excised from the family. <laughs> that should be the be-all, end-all of that. Yes, there... you, you gave your daughter to your husband for sex, so he would stay. Yeah, there's no like, and they they, they go the whole like, you know. 
she even says like I forgive you because you know they're go they're going the whole Christian I forgive you despite the fact that you did something horrible root I'm sorry but I don't care that is that is not forgivable no, definitely not. I feel it was a missed opportunity to use the song fancy by Reba McIntyre in the soundtrack <laughs> don't even know what that is <laughs> it's about a mother who turns her daughter into a prostitute so she can have a better life oh so it would have been very on the nose. <laughs> Right, because that's, that's all I'm getting at. So yes, I am. I am surprised they didn't use it then. I also have all note, man. Doctor Phil, Maury, and Jerry Springer couldn't help these people. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a fuck. Yeah, yeah. This family is. Uh, th- these three people have had a fucked up life. Yeah, they are. They are beyond daytime talk shows. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, so basically, th- they don't somehow tell the mother to walk off a cliff somewhere. <laughs> And uh, she, Lisa basically, uh, not right away, but she does go home. She goes back home with Carlos. Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> it's crazy. She's like, okay, mom, fine. So now we finally get the the name of the movie happening. Mm-hmm. The family reunion. Yes. And, uh, you know, we get everybody, everybody. Apparently there's a, is there another family reunion going on at the same time? I don't believe so. Because there's other there's people with these like purple shirt uniforms yeah, yeah. and it says like a different family on it. It says like something something else family reunion. Like we it don't doesn't know say what Medea's last name is. Yeah, we do. What is it? Medea's last name. I even have a note here because we find out her full name in the court scene. Oh. Um Mabel Where the fuck is it? Except the beating May Simmons. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, that is what it says. Yeah. Then why are some people wearing? Some people aren't. It's like some people are wearing uniforms, all, all, almost as if like they're working the reunion. Are they extras? <laughs> they're extras, and they got that shirt as like a bonus. Yeah, that's like their not? pay. <laughs> yeah, we can't afford to pay you uh, union wages, even though we're gonna make two hundred bajillion dollars. But here's a shirt. <laughs> Thanks. If they let that girl keep those cutoffs, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> God Ugh. damn, she was smoking hot. Oh, yeah, when he was like, Uncle uh, Joe was when recording When Uncle Joe was her. like, yeah, get one of the cold ones at the bottom. Why was he recording her with like this, the oldest camera ever? Because this movie came out like... T- Man, that is like a tape. That is like an old school, like... That was yes, and he's super old. And creepy as fuck. That's why I put creepy fucker. Yeah, well, I mean, let's see, the movie came out, you know, a decade ago, and he was old in the movie, like, the character's supposed to be old, so yeah, he would have had a, if he got, if he had gotten a camera, it would have been at some point in the late 80s, more than likely. Clearly, it's not going to work. you don't get rid of it just because it's, you know, old, it still works. No, it's not. How is it going to work? Where is he going to get filmed for that? Well, VCRs were still a No, I think point. it's like one of those film, like, reels. No, no, it's, it's a, no, it was a handy cam. Like you'd put a cassette in. The more you know, <laughs> right? Uh, but I mean, it's still weird that he just kind of has that there. <laughs> he's yeah, like he ready to it? record women's asses. But he's at a family reunion. This Recording his women's family, <laughs> his family's butt. Gross. Gross. Uh, yeah. All, like bringing it back to all in the family. <laughs> <laughs> he actually has no. You know, I might take that Viagra now. Oh. Ew. I never even thought about that too. Like at first, I'm watching and I'm like, "Oh, he's kind of creepy." And when Mariah said, "Brendan, this is a family reunion," I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, she's wearing the purple fa- Simmons family yeah. reunion shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're workers, I feel like they're employees at the family reunion. They are employees of the movie. They are extras. <laughs> oh my god. Um, this is the point where the movie really starts to preach to us. Yes. Because we get the great Cicely Tyson and Maya Angelou. Uh, Maya Angelou looks exhausted slash not stoked to be there. <laughs> I thought that was a girl from Touched by an Angel. <laughs> you thought it was Della Reese? Yeah, I did. Because of the hair. I just think it okay. So this scene, like, like when I say it gets preachy, I mean like the scene that made me kind of like laugh out loud. as like, what is when? So Cicely Tyson and uh, Maya Angelou and like a couple other older ladies are walking up to this church, huh. right? And no, it's, no, it's a, a cabin. cabin. Okay, well, whatever. They're walking up to this building where they're gonna 
<laughs> fucking fucking it's preach. it's a pretty important plot point actually because it factors into the speech anyway they're going to that that place where they're going to do their fucking preaching or whatever and when they're walking up they see like a couple kids like gambling like you know playing craps or whatever and they're just yep. like they make a face like oh no and then <laughs> they see people dancing and their reaction is even more like oh dancing Yes. <laughs> like, what? Because <laughs> their, their shirts are just kind of, like, tied. You can see, like, their belly buttons. But they're, it's not like they're, like, naked. Mm-hmm. And then later when they do their speech, they're actually, like, women are naked dancing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's the, is this what we paid for speech? <laughs> oh, my God. I do have a note here. This is one of the most disjointed scenes in the movie. Yeah, this is, like, my... I, I, out of the hate I've bestowed upon this movie, this is my easily the least favorite thing. I like thing. how, like, when she starts singing, they all gather like sheep. <laughs> like, she's like the, the, the dog. Well, they rang the bell, too, so... They're like sheep noises. Yeah, I... I they, they, it's literally, literally five minutes of Cicely Tyson just, like, preaching. She, uh... The, the whole idea behind the speech being that, you know all the struggles that their family and, you know, the black community in general had to endure is all those struggles. It was it just so that you could shoot craps and grind on each other, basically shaming them for, you know, enjoying a free life. And I get where, where she's going with it. Like the idea, like, you know, you should keep striving to make your life even better, to make it equal, instead of just free, but like 100% equal. I get that. But it's like when someone complains about someone who doesn't want to necessarily wear their patriotism or military support on their sleeve. It's like, you know, you should be doing that. It's like, well, you know what? They, it was, they fought and many died. So that I would have the freedom to choose to not to do that. You know, the idea being like, the, if if there was a sacrifice made for freedom, don't shame me for enjoying the, that freedom. Right. Yeah, and the crazy thing to me is like, if they had said, like, if they had just had the scene where they were reacting to the people playing craps, because they got kind of violent with each other, I'd be like, oh, they're just against like, you know, violence. And I'm like, fine, that's fine. But the dancing thing was just like, okay, no, that now this is getting to be too much. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, that's, I mean, it, it's it's got to be one, it's got to be a direction. There has to be some sort of uh, stance that they have to take. I get it. Uh, it does bother me that when, when people do that, it's, it's like, you know what, you should do it this way. Even though, you know, there was, you know, sacrifices were made so you can be free to choose to do whatever you want you should still do it the way we're telling you to do it yeah it's like it's like how about you do you and i'll i'll do me as long as we're not hurting anyone or like you know causing anyone's uh strife then it doesn't really like it won't affect you if i decide to dance (laughs) right (laughs) or even gamble like and i i feel like if if there had been some straightforward disrespect towards uh, the, the cabin where she is delivering the speech because the cabin has a historical significance to the family uh, that they bought it from, or their great-great-grandparents bought it from uh, the slave owners uh, so they could, have a, they could have a little parcel of land for themselves and grow up and out from there as a family. If they had somehow disrespected that, then... Yes, by all means, uh, give a, a speech about how you should be honoring and respecting this. Yeah. Because this is important. You shouldn't take this for granted. But if they're, you know, enjoying themselves in a free manner, I don't, I, I don't see what the issue is either. But that's the thing with, you know, the generation that comes, that, that came ahead of you. A lot of times they'll look down on you because, you know what? God damn it. I worked hard to give you a better life 
than I had, and now I have nothing but resent for the fact that you have a better life than I had. Fuck, who's preachy now? <laughs> this is what I'm getting. It's the same idea. Yeah, 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 that's true. Right? Yeah, yeah. But after all that, and everyone hugs everyone. Yes. And everyone, every single person is in agreement. You know, uh-huh. we're going to stop doing the whatever. Um, we, uh... We get an awesome despair montage. Yeah, more Lisa being, you know, tortured by Carlos, but she gets away again. Because it's the day of the wedding. Yes. And, uh, this is the scene. So, and I know we talked about the grits before. Mm Mm-hmm. But, (sighs) anyway, so she... Go and swing. Yeah, so she legitimately does that. To Carlos to burn his face and then beats the fuck out of him with a frying pan. Mm -hmm. And we have this sort of like, I don't know, this like peppermint Jennifer Garner moment of her being like, I'm a badass now. And and that's all well and good. Like, she got out. Great. That's that's awesome. But in, in a movie that like, you're trying to like set this up as a serious, scary domestic abuse situation. I don't know if that's the most responsible way to handle that in terms of like a movie's narrative. Street justice but like come on like that's just like it's like a silly it goes from a serious drama to like a silly comedy yeah like there's goofy music being played over this over her throwing the grits and then beating the shit out of them yeah i don't remember goofy music. oh it's it's very silly music like it's like well i'm not i am not gonna question the choices of tyler perry because he is an auteur okay I'm just saying that I don't think it's a reasonable way to conclude the storyline. That's all. Luckily, they don't. I don't I don't <laughs> think it's very good to conclude a serious storyline with a goofy scene played for laughs. Yeah. That's all. So now we go to the uh, the gigantic church that they're supposed to be having the wedding oh at. Oh my god, yeah. Lisa shows up and she's like, tells everyone what's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a note here, and uh, it says, uh, <laughs> "I said hallelujah." The, no, yeah, he says hallelujah, hallelujah. But he also says, uh, "I was like, is that the stripper from the get- beginning?" So I guess is it the predator from the beginning? Well, I mean, there's okay. So there's the whole thing where they're waiting for Lisa to show up. Yeah, and uh, Aunt Vi from Fresh Prince of Bel Air who is the wedding planner, uh, she shows up and she's, you know, getting upset about this whole thing. And uh, Maria, uh, not Maria, Medea, um, I believe, threatens to beat up somebody and says, Jesus just saved your life and that she shot Tupac. Yeah. But not the, not the time he died, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like when Medea's like, Victoria, shut up. Just shut up. And then, uh, yeah, so we then... an impromptu marriage. Yeah, uh, yeah so um, Frankie decides, well, well, the wedding's already here, so let, let's... Because the planner's like, what am I going to do now with this wedding that I can't plan? But Frankie oh. proposes, and, uh, of course, Vanessa says yes. The wedding planner... What's crazy is that as soon as Lisa admits, like, the, her harrowing story of, like, oh, my God, I've been abused for this long, the wedding planner immediately is like, well, what am I going to do now? <laughs> like, much. there's no moment of like oh my god <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh we see the wedding oh and there lord. are literal human angels <laughs> being yes, propelled <laughs> from the <laughs> ceiling what happens if they have to go to the bathroom they just go yeah what is this wrestlemania because like it takes her forever to go to the fucking altar <laughs> She does, like, the Undertaker entrance. But, yeah. Thanks for explaining so, my joke. <laughs> well, no. People who watch wrestling don't know. Wrestling reference number one. So, so anyway. Well, you had to fit in that. She had to have room for that train because it was huge. What a coincidence <laughs> that her and her sister are the same size and dress. Yeah. I don't want to glaze over this too much. There are people dressed as angels mm-hmm. um, it, hanging from the ceiling. And at first I was like, oh, okay. It's just, like. Uh, decoration things and then the, one of them started to move and I was like those are people yes. those are people hanging there how long have they been waiting there <laughs> that's yeah. my question <laughs> it, they really did take me out of that whole reading that my Angelou was doing at the time 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Also, she the the wedding planner was on Helen, on Helen, on uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh. oh. Okay. On Hel- not on Vi. All right. Well, there you go, Fresh Prince uh, viewers. Please do not write to us. In- it's important to be accurate. I I so. wouldn't have even known because I don't think I've really ever seen that show very much. That's too bad because it's a, it was a fantastic show. I'm sure it was. I believe you. But yeah, and my I, Uncle Joe holds up a sign during the wedding ceremony and says, <laughs> "She's got two kids." Yeah, but Maya She's Angelou, lady. I was, I was, uh, I was distracted by her poem because at one point she just says, "In and out, in and out, in and out." Yes, <laughs> she's talking about the the it's like the restaurant. Yes, it's it's verbal imagery. She's talking she's about she's talking she's talking about love, but she is also talking uh, about sex, baby. Man, she's you didn't about... even like my jo- joke there. I didn't even know what you said. I said it's like the restaurant, the fast food, in and out. Oh my god, that's a in and out burger. Yeah. So because there was no there was no <sighs> vows to be read because apparently Carlos and Lisa had their own stuff, he just lets uh, Frankie and Vanessa talk, and her. Her vows, like the, the what she says, that goes on for a fair bit. I thought it would have been awesome if he had been just been like same. Ditto. <gasps> ditto. Yeah, actually, I can what I have. Ditto. But instead, what he <laughs> says is, "I know there is a God, and He loves me so much that He made you just for me." Yep. That's a little selfish. <laughs> you were made so that I could have you. <laughs> no, that's that's. That's not what he's totally saying. Totally what he says. No, it isn't. How is that not what he said? It's that's okay. What he said was he made you just for me. Yeah. He's not saying that as like, you know, he is going to own her. He means that she was made to complete his life and him to complete hers. Oh, that's cute. The, that second thing he doesn't say though. He just says you were made just for me. Okay. That sounds pretty selfish. I don't think so. Okay. I think you're reading too much. Well, we will agree to disagree on that. I don't agree to that. Well, that's too bad. (laughs) Anyway, the movie ends with dancing. But it's like saying, like, uh, we're meant for each other. But he doesn't say that. But. That's what he's getting at. But he doesn't say it. He's kind of getting at with the religion stuff. Oh, whatever. We get a super awkward exchange between (laughs) Victoria and Vanessa. Again, she should not be at that wedding. Yeah, yeah, what the hell? Like, Victoria... She does say that she's beautiful. Yeah, and Vanessa's all, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody line dance! And they play the most obvious song you could possibly play. We are family. I got all my sisters with me. And then this movie comes to a merciful fucking end. Like, old some Yeller. some awesome bloopers. I was like, bloopers, yes! They were terrible bloopers. Fantastic bloopers. And then no, we get to see then we get we get to see Tyler Perry play yet another role in this movie as Michael Jackson in the year 2045. Hilarious. Just delightful. <clears throat> yeah. The thing about bloopers is like all you need to do is show like a few clips that show that everybody kind of had a good time making this movie. I didn't get that at all from the bloopers. No. Not at all. Uh-huh. Especially, like, the scene where Medea is just, like, talking to the audience in the theater. Like, there's kind of some smiles around her, but it goes on for so long, and people just look uncomfortable. And then there's the bit where, uh, with, with him playing Joe and uh, Frankie, and when Joe is saying, like, you need to read the script, blah, 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 and they're just kind of sitting there, not really laughing. I don't know, it just, like, it had a weird, like, feel for me. Well, in fairness, they're supposed to be playing that scene straight I, just, I, I don't know man the bloopers i'm not even saying it because i don't like this movie to me just like i was actually like oh outtakes these will at least be funny and it just felt like i don't know it just felt strange and they were. no they weren't they were terrible and I, I don't feel that we need to i mean maybe you didn't see the you know everyone had a good time while making this come across in the bloopers but it was probably because it came across in the movie too it looked like they were having a great time because i mean they were involved in shut up a cinematic Shut up. masterpiece. I, I hate you so much right now. And, and when you're working with a genius, well, anyway, like so we've Tyler come Perry. to the end of our movie here. And uh, Mariah, would you recommend this movie? Over far too soon. Uh for rec- if you're just looking for something of background background noise, or also looking to get a couple of good laughs, 
Yeah. I'd say it's pretty good. Say, and Nathan, obviously we know where you stand. 100% recommend it. If you want to see what great filmmaking oh, shut looks your... like. Like what you can do with just the, the spirit of willing to, to create art and, and to do it right and well. Watch this This movie, movie is worse than Postal. We are going to take an ad break. We will be right back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Hey, we're back. And we're about to go into the low haiku. I, I can't even work up the, the voice right now. I'm so upset. The uh, low haiku. Where we sum up the movie we just talked about. In the 17 perfect syllables that describe the genius that is Medea's family reunion. Brandon, would you like to go first? Sure. Please, proceed. Broad-ass comedy, domestic abuse drama. Ah, tone shift, tone shift. There we go. Cool. One man in three roles... And he directed it, too. All Oscars to him. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Brendan is so mad. And we're back! Hey. Nathan. Yes, Brendan. What do we always say? We always say... Don't take a word for us. Well, thank God the critics at least agreed with me because this movie has a 25% and apparently Nathan went on with a bunch of fake accounts because the audience rating is 84 somehow. Again, that's a delight. Yep. So what do the what do the critics have to say, Nathan? Well, uh, Jim Ridley from the Village Voice says, Perry's vaudevillian shamelessness and indifference to committee-approved taste are energizing and frequently jaw-dropping. Is that a positive or a negative? Positive. It's got oh. a tomato next to it, so... Okay. Uh, Randy Cordova from the Arizona Republic says, Nothing that happens seems the least bit believable. Thank you, Randy. And everything is brash and loud. All that's missing is the laugh track. Which is interesting because... Didn't... He did like a sitcom, House of didn't Pain he? or something yeah. like that. P U A I N E uh, is like a spinoff from this cinematic universe. I have never watched it, but yes, I think that's what it is. Okay. Uh, Owen Gleiberman from Entertainment Weekly says, "Let's not sell Tyler Perry short. As the vinegar-witted Medea, he's a drag performer of testy charm, but in his overlit patchwork way, he's also making the most primal women's pictures since John." I'm oh, sorry, Joan Crawford flexed her shoulder pads. Uh, Christy Lemire of the Deseret News, or Desiree, I'm not sure. Um, At times it feels as if Perry made three separate films that dumped them in a blender and hit the puree button. <laughs> I think we actually... That's think, very much yeah. true. <laughs> uh, Cam Williams uh, from uh, blackfilm.com says, A Tyler Perry tour de force. Lovely. Uh, and the last critics one I'll read here is from Scott Tobias of the AV Club. I think it's... Yeah, it's a, it's a negative one, but it's like borderline. Uh, Though Perry's films are hard to defend on aesthetic grounds, the crazy shifts in tone from operatic melodrama to broad comedy could cause seizures. It's equally hard to begrudge the undeserved audiences who embrace them so passionately. Hmm. Okay, and I think I, we got... I'll get one more, and then I'm going to let you have your... 
delightful one, which... Oh, my I, God. <laughs> uh, this one is Sherry Linden from The Hollywood Reporter. It says, Brimming with cliches, Medea, like Diary, uh, has an undeniable appeal for those who can stick with it in its earnest and unfashionable conviction. I wish Ernest was in this movie. I would... Oh, my goodness. That would have been, burn, that burn, been the burn. best. Man, Medea and... Ernest in the same... I don't think I would have been able to contain yeah, myself. Yeah, or, you know, just take out Medea and put in Ernest. No, no. they. I, I think they would make it, you know, better. <sighs> okay. Uh, do you have any audience reviews you want to do before I do? Because I got a long one. <laughs> Give me a second here. Let me grab some audience ones. Well, uh, Vanna V says, uh, another of Tyler Perry's Medea movies. I think that is as funny as the first one. Uh, so not funny. Got it. Uh, no, because apparently Aruyan R says absolutely hysterical and interesting plot. No, I disagree on both. <laughs> anyone else? Anyone else? RD says it's the best movie ever. I masturbate to it every day. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Is that a real review? Five stars. Is that a is that wait now is that, now, is that review. is that a movie rating or a masturbation rating? I don't know, man. May twenty seventh, two thousand fifteen. He put it to he put it on the internet. It's there forever. Good God. Yes. Susan C says, if it's Tyler Perry, it's a hit. <laughs> well, I mean that's actually true. If it's Tyler Perry, it's shit. Yeah, put an S on that, and I agree. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Again, it's like a typo. The, the the sheer. <sighs> filmmaking mastery. Okay, Nathan, I'm going to read the is... last audience oh. review here. Okay. I'm not letting you go on another fucking filmmaking rant. <sighs> okay. This is, uh... God, I didn't even check the star rating. I'm assuming this is a five-star review. <laughs> Alright, you ready for this, guys? Bring it on. Okay. And I'm going to read it exactly as it's written. Okay. Medea is epic. Let me elaborate. First off, there are so many Medea movies and it's hard to pick a favorite because since they're so darn good. Bit this isn't just a comedy. This movie shows more emotion than my bipolar cousin. Oi mean, this movie could very well be a best-selling novel in any genre. It's sad, funny, scary, exciting, suspenseful and more. Medea has so many has so many different personalities and so many layers. Speaking of layers, I saw Medea's nice perp key gown on the cover, and I was inspired to dress up like that myself. I bought a Supreme brand violet shirt, but it wasn't good enough at $1,001. But that's okay. I gave it to cat number 306 to rip up. I bought an actual dress that was $500,000, 1776 dress worn by Abigail Adams, worth every penny. Even Cat's number 401, 56, and even number one himself loves to rip it to shreds. I see the critic reviews say there is something to be desired. I disagree. I think this delivers on every single note. First, Medea's family fells Leoke my family. I got to know them so well over the course of five months, and since I watch this every day for five months, every one of those 16,380 hours devoted to this film was worth it. I felt like Medea was my sister, Medea's cousin was my cousin, and Medea's kids were my little nieces and nephews. It felt nice so finally have a family, since my wife left me at age 16. What is going on? I feel like I have a family, but only cat number 450 and 201 are that close to me. Also, the arguments were so real it made me cry a little. Only a little. It only took me four hours and number 399 drinking some of my tears. I wanted to defend Medea, but I knew I could tn and had the cops called for yelling too loud in an apartment building. I guess saying I'm going to kill this whole family is threatening? Huh? Anyway, I love Medea in every way. Sean Edwards of Fox TV states that this is the movie of the season. I think it should be movie of all time! Tied with primates of the Caribbean and robots, oh, obviously. I thought the Fox reviews would be more accurate, considering Fox News is so amazing and not fake. I may or may not have tried to kiss Medea, and may or may not have cried into number 50 because she isn't real. Number 50 did get a nice shower! She jumped out the second story window, but it's okay. 
The outfits are so realistic to a real family that I bought the entire set of the movie, clothes and all, for only $10 million. What a steal. Even though my cats only get one food pebble a week, it's the best money I've ever spent. Almost trying with the money spent... Almost trying with the money spent on Barbies, but that's another story. Anyway, thank you, sincere lit Medea lover number 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 Buera C four Y five. Holy wow. fucking Hudson what the V fuck? is a sly satirical genius. Yeah, that was fucked. Nathan, was that yours? <laughs> no, because all of mine would have been filled with legitimate compliments. Does he have like? Does he have like five hundred cats? I think he just got hit over the head really hard before he wrote that. Oh my god! Oh, that that was... was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> At least you didn't think it was a water park. I suppose there is that. But Nathan, I mean, we got th- we got through that. We got through the reviews. We got through everything else. Let's uh, let's hear from uh, old Montrose Monkington. Okay, get the guy here in a second. <clears throat> Hello. It's good friend Montrose Minkington the Third here, and uh, I just like to take the the time to thank again Nathan and Brendan for having me on uh, their their show to help promote my uh, social medias and the YouTubes, and also to talk about the cinematic genius that is Tyler Perry. More I think later. Is delightful, uh, and uh, Bye, absolutely someone uh, who should be emulated at every turn. Milos, um, get my Montrose out of here, please. No, it, Monkey is making excellent point. I will not make him leave. He is a great chimpanzee. I love his uh, TV. Montrose Monkington TV on the YouTube is my favorite. I also follow him. Uh, at Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and friends. And uh, yes, that is it. Oh, oh no, Milos, uh, you've also forgotten my Twitter handle uh, at Montrose the Third. Uh, that's the number three uh, D, and you can follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, Wait a second, does Sylvester Stallone just walk in the room? No. Uh, oh, are you talking about this chap? Oh, you know what? Uh, I wish I was in a Tyler Perry. Wait, wait, movie. Clint Eastwood, is that you? Yes, and uh, I think Tyler Perry is a national treasure. The entire cast of The Sound of Music. No. Thank you. Uh, more later. Bye, everyone. So long, yo. Uh, have a good day, punk. I will get back to cleaning. Oh, I'm so upset right now. So. You're welcome. Mariah, we're breaking up. <laughs> Sweet. Before you do our socials, I think I should give a hint. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So. A couple weeks. It's uh, Patty's pick. Because Mariah picked this. Again, thank you, Mariah. I had a great time watching this. No problem. Go to hell, Mariah. But Patty's pick is coming up in a couple weeks, and my clue is yippee ki modem fixer. There you have it. Work that into your brains. Right. I think it's kind of obvious, but... Yeah. Citizen it's... Kane? <laughs> Finally, we're taking down Citizen Kane. <laughs> Medea goes to jail. <laughs> no. So... Uh, you can also follow our podcast, uh, What Were They Thinking, on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. We're also on Facebook, and we have a Facebook group, What Were They Thinking Interactive, where you can talk at us. Uh, we've got uh, Redbubble, uh, you can just search for us on Redbubble, and we're also on Patreon at patreon.com slash WWTT Podcast, or just search for us. Lots of great things you can sign up for there, and uh, any support you can uh, you can help us out with is very much greatly appreciated. And we do, I, I mean, we had someone on as a guest for being a patron. Yes. We uh, we get uh, you can you can pick the movie at one of the tiers. You can, which she also did as well. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, you can advertise if you get to a certain level. So yeah, lots of great things you can do. And also, of course, if you want to listen to our podcast, which you obviously are listening to right now anyway, but you can also find us on Podbean at www.ttpodcast.podbean.com. Uh, you can find us on uh, iTunes slash Apple Podcasts. I'm all out of sorts right now. Uh, Stitcher, Spotify, all that good stuff. We've reached the end. I want to thank Mariah for coming on as our guest. Yes, thank you, Mariah. No problem. Not- Hall- 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 Hall-
What? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, uh, Hallelujah. Oh. That's thought, what it was. I thought you were just like, how, how, jer. How, jer. Brian's been drinking for the last five minutes while we were reading the reviews. And my batteries are running low. That last, that last review I read put her into, uh, <laughs> Comatose, uh, comatose, comatose state. Comatose state there. Yeah. Words. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we've come to the end. We've plugged. We've talked about what we're doing uh, for the next movie. Well, we you gave a little hitsky anyway. So Nathan, do you have? Oh God, I can't believe I'm, I'm gonna ask you this. Do you have any questions? Just fucking do it. Get it over with. I was say like I a band aid. Rip them, it off. I got Woo! questions. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. We've been doing this this podcast now almost almost what three years now coming up. It, 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 I can't believe it's taken us this long to to recognize the the tr- sheer brilliance that is Tyler Perry, and you know in, in a movie where he handles just so subtly, so subtly between you know a, a legit, a legitimate you know despair ridden domestic violence and you know when a kid just needs a good whooping uh with a movie that you know kind of eludes the fact that uncle joe's a little into incest and uh in in a movie where you just a a judge can can hand out um you know kids to people in the courtroom who've also been convicted of crimes and and make it all seem like like seamless. I just I just gotta ask, Brendan. What? What were they thinking? <sighs> Fuck this movie. <laughs> it's time. Let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Ban out, ban out, ban out, ban out. Everything I learned from movies helps to make life a little bit groovy. With the one last plot holes a gratuitous boobies. It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy at eilfm.podbean.com. Was A Quiet Place inspired by signs it comes at night in War for the Planet of the Apes? Was Ready Player One influenced by Avatar, Wreck-It Ralph, and The Last Starfighter? Is the Hurricane Heist more influenced by Sharknado or Geostorm? These are the kinds of questions my guest co-hosts and I discuss on my podcast, Piecing It Together. Every week we look at a new movie and try to figure out what other movies inspired it, whether it's the story, the character development, tone, or even use of music. Every movie was influenced by something that came before it, and we want to figure out what. Check out Piecing It Together on your favorite podcast app or check us out on PiecingPod.com. You can also follow us on social media at PiecingPod. Piecing It Together is a part of the All Points West Podcast Network.